Hey guys, it's Sandeep from Rivalers and in this video we're going to be talking about the Mi Mix Alpha smartphone. It's the latest smartphone in the Mi Mix lineup from Xiaomi and it was just announced in China today. Now the main highlight of this device is the wraparound screen, the screen that goes all the way from the front up until the back and over the edges. So we'll be talking about the screen and all the other aspects of the Mi Mix Alpha in this video. Now before we get started, please do make sure to hit the subscribe button and also give us a thumbs up if you happen to enjoy the video at the end. Let's get this started. Before we get started on the Mi Mix Alpha, I'd like to talk about bezel screens and also the first generation Mi Mix smartphone. So the whole concept of a bezel screen or the need for a bezel screen uh, was due to the fact that as display sizes got larger and larger, there needed to be a solution to this where the smartphone doesn't get too big for your hands. Of course, your hands are not going to grow. There, there has to be a limitation to the physical size of the smartphone and uh, shrinking the bezels was the way to go in order to accommodate as large a screen as possible in as small a footprint of physical size as possible. Now, Sharp actually was one of the first ones to introduce this whole concept with the Aquas Crystal Collection. Uh, they had, uh, you know, top uh, be bezel-less top and sides, but they did have a bottom chin. So they kind of uh, had a thick bottom chin, but it still looked really great in that time. And if you especially looked at the camera viewfinder on that, you would notice that it, it looked unbelievable and something like straight out of the future. And Mi Mix was essentially a follow up on that and kind of maybe a reiteration and a, a revision on that and kind of made the entire thing better and also accessible globally. So when uh, we were actually watching the live stream of the first Mi Mix, I thought this was a concept. I thought that, you know, this was a smartphone that they're intending to push it out a few years later, but that's not the case. It actually came <laughs> to be and we even got the smartphone uh, for purchase all over the world and that's a great thing and although the number of units were less and it's more of a proof of concept rather than a best seller or a device that, ex they, that they expect to sell millions of units it still shows that uh, you know technology needs to go a certain way and now over the years since the Mi Mix bezels have gotten smaller and smaller and the chin has now disappeared almost completely and now we have smartphones that are close to 100% screen to body ratio. Now comes the Mi Mix Alpha. So what the Alpha does is basically have a display at the front, at the sides and even at the back. So we have seen waterfall displays which essentially has a really steep curve at the edges. The Vivo Next 3 is an example of that. So the curve at the edge is not uh, more of the glass curving, but the display itself curves onto the actual sides. The Mate 30 Pro is also an example of that. And that means that you have to go for on-screen virtual button since there's no place to keep the physical keys for volume or power. We still managed to cram a power button on the Mate 30 Pro on the right side, but the volume buttons, etc., are still on-screen. And the next kind of removes the power button as well. And every button is on-screen. Now, the Mi Mix Alpha takes the same concept to the next level. So you have a display at the top, you have the display at the sides which are curved. Now the sides have uh, two issues. One, since the sides are active, it needs to have palm rejection or accidental touch rejection, which is a huge problem if you intend on having a smartphone with the screen all around. So when you actually hold it, you need to be able to reject those accidental inputs and this has that. On top of that, it also has pressure sensitive zones on both the sides, which means that you can actually uh, kind of uh, use it to control volume, power and all these things and maybe even use it for gaming like you know you have the ROG phone too which, is a, which has the air triggers on the side. So apart from that the side also gives you the application where you can use say a flip cover and only the side remains active where you can see details about the notifications and the battery life, the time etc which was a concept that Samsung initially introduced with the Note Edge which had just a curved screen on the right side. They actually used two different screens in that concept where they had a primary screen and a secondary additional screen that had been stuck onto it. But the software was done so well that you didn't really feel it was two different screens. But in this case, it's a single screen that goes all the way around. Now the difference between the Mi Mix Alpha and say a smartphone such as the Fold is that this has been pre-flexed. It has been pre-flexed, pre-curved and pre fitted onto the phone in such a way that you cannot flex it further but you actually have a device that is curved. It's a curved display nonetheless uh, and while the Fold, Huawei Mate X and other phones can actually flex it further as many times as you want, this can be uh, used as it is itself. So you cannot flex it but at the end you get a wraparound screen that goes all the way around and I'm guessing you also will be able to deactivate certain zones. So you can maybe just have the display active at the front 
maybe you can add the sides to it and then you can add the all-round experience as well and this would be helpful in order to conserve the battery life there's a 4000 mAh battery on board and I'm guessing with the full screen turned on it won't last too long so you'd be better off using just the sides and the display at the front or just the front as itself now since it has a wraparound display and the effective screen to body ratio is close to 181% it's 180.6% or so that's crazy because Considering the surface area you have, the screen is there on both sides, which is why you get such a crazy figure. Now, because it goes all the way around, there is no front-facing camera. You can essentially use the rear camera itself to capture selfies, uh, considering you can use the back part of the screen as a viewfinder in order to capture selfies and reframe yourself within that. That brings us to the camera aspect of things. So you have a 20 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, you have a 12x telephoto camera with 2x optical zoom, but the real party piece of this smartphone is the 108 megapixel camera. It's a Samsung sensor, 1 by 1.33 in sensor size, and it has OIS as well. So Xiaomi had teased this a while back, saying that they would launch a smartphone with the 108 megapixel uh, pixel count, and it kind of makes sense to introduce it with the Mi Mix Alpha. They say that this is a customized sensor, so I'm not sure whether we'll see the exact same sensor being used on other camera phones uh, but earlier on in the year Qualcomm did say that we would get as much as 100 megapixels you know on a smartphone and here it is because you know all these manufacturers have to work with the SOC maker in order to get you know compatibility and the, sen the processor itself has to support that resolution so this is powered by Snapdragon 855 plus processor there's 12 GB of RAM so that's enough processing power to take care of even 108 megapixels and by default it captures 27 megapixel photos as a result of pixel binning. Now uh, the exact need for 108 megapixels on a smartphone uh, is something that's a matter of debate. People say that 12 megapixels is still good enough and at the end in fact you're using it with 27 megapixels because it's a pixel bin image and you do get more detail as we have seen. 48 megapixel give more details, the 64 megapixels give more details and I'm sure that the 108 megapixels would also give more details than you know uh, many smartphones with smaller megapixel count but of course there's the downside of having you know better i mean lower uh, low light performance and those kind of things but we just have to see how it is overall in terms of the uh, quality and the performance in real life uh, this this these cameras are actually protected by sapphire glass and they're housed in a ceramic housing um, sapphire glass means there's no scratches whatsoever and it's more durable in terms of scratch protection than even Gorilla Glass or any other kind of uh, you know uh, safety glass that's available right there but it is fragile so uh, considering that you know this is a high-end smartphone people might be carefully using it so I guess it makes sense and there's also titanium housing for the entire smartphone so titanium housing is apparently three times as strong stainless steel which Apple is using on his iPhones and stainless steel is indeed more shock resistant and more durable compared to say regular aluminium so that way titanium is also really good and is a really premium material you get 512 gb of storage ufs 3.0 of course there's a 4000 mAh battery that supports 40 watt uh, fast charging and overall the device is beautiful in terms of the looks i mean that this would be both a great smartphone to photograph and videograph as well as a smartphone that you really don't want to because of the fingerprints and the reflections and all the pains that come with photographing such a smartphone. So this smartphone is going to be available as a 5G only device at the end of the year that is in December at a price of US dollars 2800. That's around uh, yuan 19,999 or roughly rupees 2 lakh. So I doubt it's going to come to India at that price point. I'm not sure how many people are going to buy it and in fact it's more expensive than smartphones such as the Galaxy Fold even uh, but it's still a really great device and I think more manufacturers need to do things like this in order to push technology forward and bring such innovations to the forefront. That's it for this video guys, hope you liked it. See you again in the next one.